What up guys, it's Chris. Today I wanted to talk about my base uh, MA2 file. Uh, a couple months ago I talked about my punt page file and today I wanted to talk about kind of a more structured file. This uh, show file is kind of geared more towards like uh, bands or, or music in that kind of sense uh, where you would have multiple songs each with its own cue list, maybe a couple bump buttons and a couple of special faders and stuff like that to control speeds and things. Um, so I'm just going to show you kind of how I lay my file out in that sense. Um, you know, depending on what level of lighting programmer you are, um, you're, you could be more of the designer, programmer, everything person, or you could just be a data managing individual. Um, I like to keep my stuff uh, absolutely as organized as possible. That's why I have gone through all the trouble of making a uh, base show file um uh, with all this stuff in it. The show file will save me a lot of time uh, in the sense of I don't have to organize you know, effects and sequences. I don't have to label fader pages and make all my song macros. Um, everything is pretty much here kind of laid out for me and I just have to edit a few uh, song names. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you uh, the macros that I've made. Uh, and you can see here I've just made a couple macros, song one, two, three, uh, I've made 20 of them, and let's just take a look at what this macro has to say. So we're going to off page 1 through 99. Uh, we'll set the variable for current song. So in this case, it's going to be song 2. Um, we're going to grab the executor of the current song. You'll see everything labeled in a minute. Put fader 1 at 100. We're gonna, it's going to sit in our setup queue, and it's going to... Um, dump us in the current songs uh, time pool, time, sorry, time code pool uh, as well. And everything you will see that I'm about to show you is going to be labeled uh, exactly how you see it here um, S O N G 2. Uh, the last line of this uh, macro also uh, stores a new view, a new effects view for us, so that we don't have to scroll, say, if we were just on song one and we went to song 20. Uh, when we go to our effects window, we don't have to scroll all the way down. It's just right there for us. Um, so let's take a quick look. Let's uh, go ahead and hit song one, for example. If you go to our fader page here, you can see that we're in our setup queue in song one. This fader is selected, so I can use the main uh, go button on the console. Um, you'll also see that everything else is populated, but it's kind of the appearance uh, is black. Same thing with all the executors at the bottom. Everything's uh, populated, but there's nothing stored there. Uh, the reason why I do this is because if we take a look at our, let's see, where is it? Our sequence window here. You can see that I've kind of organized it in a way where um, because everything's populated, everything will stay together. Uh, if you just started programming, you know, a couple executors here and there and everywhere, maybe on song 15, um, it would just use the next populated spot. So here, 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 here. And, you know, if you're not on top of things, it can get messy if you don't go back and label and move things uh, right away. So what I've done is I've just uh, gone ahead and laid out all 20 of my uh, sequences. There's absolutely nothing stored in them right now. There's two empty queues stored in the uh, green song executor, and that's about it. I uh, keep all these as temps, and uh, these are just normal faders for the time being. They could not be used. They could be used. Um, this is just more about organization. Uh, if we look at our time code window, you can see there's no time code. There's nothing programmed anywhere. Uh, there's really not even much patched in this, to be honest. But you can see that we do have our uh, 20 time code presets that uh, are all labeled, you know, uh, according as, as kind of we've been doing throughout this whole thing. Uh, back on screen two, if we take a quick look at our uh, effects here, you can see that we're in song one, and it says song one effects. We have some bass effects down here. I'm going to populate this some more. I have a couple more to import from different show files. Um, but you can see if we just kind of scroll down, you'll see song one, two, three. I gave all of them three spaces. This should be plenty. Um, f you know, for me, for each song, so that's why I programmed it as such. You have your groups up here, so you can still grab stuff. And um, yeah, let's just say if we went back to our main window here and we went to song 15, 
back to uh, two. You see it doesn't uh, populate uh, live. You have to just tap it again here, and we'll see it's relabeled song 15. If I go back into my view, I'm right at my song 15 effects. Uh, so to me, that's pretty desirable. And again, if I was in a live show setting, um, I might hit my show view here. And uh, screen two would be my main kind of view. That's the one right in front of me when I'm at the console. Um, and then I can just kind of go ahead and, okay, we're going to play song one. Uh, maybe the guys are going to go, or, or whoever is playing, uh, is going to go out of order. And I can jump around uh, song seven, song three. That, that's the important thing about the first line in this macro is offing everything so that you don't accidentally get caught up in the last cue of song four or something, for example. Um, so I know the, the base show file that I have doesn't have much patched, uh, doesn't have anything programmed or anything like that. So I kind of wanted to show you guys another example of this uh, a little bit more in action um, to the best that I can on, on PC here. So... Uh, same thing, if we go back to our show look uh, on screen two, you can see that I have a few different uh, songs here. And this is the band Walk the Moon. I've ran their show a couple times. They're great guys, it's really fun music. Um, but you can see here that, you know, I'm in uh, Lisa Baby, and it'll off everything, put me right into Lisa, and then say if they jump around, if they wanted to play, you know, headphones next. Everything would just be offed. I could go into the thing, uh, sorry, the uh, intro there. And, uh, you know, as long as your band likes to start in black or maybe they like to start in blue, you might have that up on a handle. Um, but this is just kind of what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, this is kind of how it'll help jump around. Um, I think I can even show you guys a 3D thing here. Let's take a quick look. So, yeah, you can see uh, down here, I'm just going to step through a couple cues. And this really would never happen in real life. I'm just going to kind of show you how the macro works. Um, you know, we're in it, this and the other thing. Oh, okay, this is the end of the song. Maybe we want to go to Shut Up and Dance With Me. And the macro does exactly what it needs to do. It offs everything. It gets you right in the setup cue for the next song. And then... The boys start playing LA, and we can just jump right back into things in a new song. Um, so yeah, this is this is kind of basic. Um, like I said, there's not a whole lot patched. There's nothing really programmed in here at all. Um, this was just kind of me working off of some other people's show files um, in the past that I've covered uh, for, and some of my own ideas. I've just kind of merged them all together and what makes sense uh, to me. So hopefully this is helpful if anyone is getting started out programming um, their own tour. You know, I like to look at information my way. Maybe this makes no sense to you, or maybe this makes a lot of sense to you. Who knows? Um, let me know in the comments. Uh, just curious the way everyone else's brain uh, thinks in MA2. So yeah, hope you guys find this helpful.